Oh, right. Okay, so for our third lesson, we're going to focus on the meaty part of the DS10 engine, and that it's uh, that is the waveforms. Okay, so as you can see here, we have two waveform knobs, the VCO1 and the VCO2. Uh, they call them oscillators. And we have a pulse wave for uh, VCO1 that controls the square wave. Um, it's not on the DS10, but we'll get more into that later. And then you have the uh, VS, the VCO2 pitch, which controls the pitch of the second waveform. And then you have the balance, which is the volume between the VCO1 and the VCO2, as represented by the 1 and 2 here. And then <clears throat> you have the VCO sync for the uh, VCO2 pitch. All right, so let us begin. So on the DS10 engine, which is the same engine on the DS10, the DSN12, which is what I'm using right here, and the IDS10, which is on the iPhone and the iPad, you get four waveforms. The default uh, waveform is your sawtooth. Let me turn off the drum, put on solo. Then you have a triangle wave. Then you have a square wave. And then you have noise. Now you have the same waveforms with uh, VCO2, except the noise is different. On the VCO1, you have white noise. And then on the VCO2, you have a, uh, a noise that you that I like to hear in uh, video games and whatnot. I don't know why it's called, but it's a, that kind of noise. So you have two different noises, which is awesome on the uh, DS10 engine. <clears throat> so with the sawtooth, you know, I use it for like horn sounds or sounds that need to be full. You know, I use it for trumpets or saxophones or, uh, you know, it's great for bass on chip tune and whatnot. And then you got your triangle wave. Oh, had the balance on too. You have your triangle wave. And the uh, that's used for like softer instruments like flutes. Uh, and, uh, you know, some instruments like that. But it's also great for bass. So if it's really low. It makes a very good bass sound, and it's also used for kick drums and percussion sounds and whatnot. And then you have the square wave. Put it higher. And, you know, it's a very uh, cut-dry sound, straightforward. Um, you hear these in old-school video games. And you can also use these for uh, certain instruments as well. You know, you can mix it with a flute or... Um, a lot of a lot of uh, synth instruments as well, and those are the four. Oh, I forgot about the noise. You have the noise, which is just sounds like static you would hear on television, or um, you know you can make other sounds like rain or waterfall and whatnot. Those are used a lot for uh, drum sounds, you know, like hit hats and whatnot. So. You have that, but if I put a low decay and a long release, you get a little crash and then a low release and low decay. And you get a hit hat sound. Same thing with the uh, other side of things. Oh, noise. A little higher pitch. You can make some, you might heard these in Nintendo games or Game Boy or any other uh, systems like Game Gear and stuff. You hear these noise drums. So that's basically an introduction to the waveforms that you have here. And it's all you pretty much need. Um, 
I know a sign that you have the sine wave and that's missing, but there's a little work around. I'll get to that later on the next lesson. Um, so let's get back to the knobs. So you have your uh, your VCO1 and VCO2. Now, on the square wave for the VCO1, you can see a little uh, pattern here, a little design of the, uh, a bigger square and an arrow to a smaller square. So that changes the pulse wave of the uh, square wave. So if you look at the square here, let's put a long, a long note, uh, full gate. All right. Let's um. All right. So you can see the square wave. Now, as I move the pulse wave up. See, it gives a different flavor of sound, and you can see the square getting smaller. Now, on the uh, this knob does not exist on the DS10, but there is another way you can get you can do the pulse wave without this knob with the VCO2, but on DSN 12 and IDS 10, you have a knob here so you can affect the uh, pulse wave on the uh, on the um, square wave, and it makes it a lot easier to make chip tune music and get your pulse waves. Now I I was still making a lot of chip music music on uh, DS 10, and you can still do the pulse wave. I'll show you that in one second, but let's continue with the other knobs. So now you have the uh, balance knob and it controls the volume balance between the two so let's put a square wave here and a sawtooth so on VCO1 you can hear the sawtooth and on VCO, uh, VCO2 you can hear the square wave but if I put it right in the middle now you can hear both of them so you do get two waveforms to play with at the same time, which you can make more complex sounds. Now, uh, and then you can control the volume between both. So I'll show you how you can hear that here. So that controls the volume between both waveforms and you can make a lot more instruments that way. So it's pretty neat. Now with the VCO2, you got your uh, waveforms here. And the VCO2 pitch controls the pitch of the waveform. So if I move it, uh, if I move it down, the pitch gets lower. If I move it up, the pitch gets higher. So that's what the uh, pitch knob does. But it can do something else. See this switch right here? This switch is the VCO sync. <clears throat> if you turn it on, it syncs the VCO2 pitch with the VCO1. So it um if you're playing both the VCO1 and the VCO2 together, like so. It will make one sound, and if it's off, and you have the uh, VCO1 and the VCO2 together, then you go back hearing both of the waveforms. So, with the VCO sync, if it's off, and you have two of the same waveforms, and you mess around the VCO2 pitch, You could make two new chords with it. Very good for making fuller instruments. But if you are uh, putting the VCO sync on, you get you get different flavors of sounds. So now you can make different sounds. If I have a square wave and a sawtooth,
You can make a lot of sounds by just moving this dial around. <clears throat> this is also a key element to uh, pulse wave sound, which you would hear in uh, old arcade games like from Namco or uh, the uh, TurboGrafx-16 or the wave channel of a Game Boy, which I'll get to that later. It's pretty awesome. Um, for the DS10 users, let's uh, let's switch real quick. I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back, and here is the DS10. If you remember, I'll show you real quick. If you can uh, see over, oh, it's hard. So as you can see. Uh, this camera is crazy, but as you can see, you got the uh, your uh, VCO one pulse wave right over here, and then you look on here, and there is no VCO one pulse wave. But you can still have your pulse wave by using the VCO two by putting your balance on two and making sure the VCO sync is up, and putting it on square wave. So from a quarter here would be your whole pulse wave, uh, you know, your, your whole, um, the, the, all the pulse wave lies in between here. Let me just play it for you. See, as I go lower, it just stops. Same thing will happen with the uh, on the DSN 12. Use the pulse wave and go all the way to zero. So from here to here is your uh, is your um, you know your uh, your pulse wave. So that's what you do if you want pulse waves. I'll get more into that later when we make some chip two music, but uh, that's. Pretty much the only difference between the DS10 and uh, DSN12 and IDS10. They just have an extra knob there to control the pulse wave on VCO1. But uh, even with the even with this technique, you can control the uh, you can do the you can squish the uh, wave the same way you do with the uh, square wave on the other waveforms. <laughs> that works too. So that is pretty much the difference. This technique also works on the DSN 12 and IDS 10. So that's a workaround for you if you want to get pulse waves on here. I will come to this again when we start making uh, chip 2 music, but I just wanted to show you that. Besides that, everything else is exactly the same as the DS uh, N12 or the IDS 10. All right, let's get back to the uh, DSN 12. Okay, now that's a lot better. All right, so that is pretty much it to recap. You know, you got the VCO1 waveform, VCO2 waveform, your uh, VCO1 pulse wave that controls the pulse wave, your VCO2 pitch that controls the pitch of the VCO2, and your VCO synced. When uh, synced on, it syncs with VCO1, and you know you can do that to do your pulse waves or your other things like I showed you before on a DS10. I'll show you again though. See, you can do the same thing on here. But that's pretty much it for the VCO sync. And then the balance, as you remember, controls the volume between both waveforms. When not synced, one synced, it syncs together. And then with both waveforms, it you know it does the volume, but now it sounds like you're getting a different sound. So with the combination of the VCO sync on and the pitch and the balance, you can make a lot of sounds.
Oh, one more thing. You have your two noises uh, with white noise. White noise seems to have no pitch. So if I play the white noise by itself, you can see regardless if I move the octave, it does not make a different sound. White noise is just noise. It doesn't matter what key you hit, it will play the same sound. But on the uh, VCO2 noise, it does have a pitch. So that's very interesting. I don't know how does white noise work like that. You know, I mean, you could probably look it up or wiki the uh, crap out of it. But uh, there we go. So there is a third noise. It's not here, but we'll get to that later. Um, so that's basically it. I hope you understand more about this. And let's move on to the next lesson. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you for watching the show. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out my website, drixager.com, for some news, more lessons, and patches. You can also check out my SoundCloud for some music as well. And if you have a question, feel free to ask that question in the comments below. I'll try to reply back as soon as possible. Take care and have fun creating music.